Hi friends! Welcome back to another book video or welcome to my channel if you have never been here before. Today's gonna be a fun one because I'm going through the 51 books that I have read so far in 2023. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now in order to keep this video short and sweet, I'm going to just basically describe each book in a sentence or less, at least that is my goal, unless there is a book that I just have a lot to say about. And with that, I will rate it on a scale one to five stars and if I end up wanting to change my rating from when I read it. So let's go ahead and dive in. I went ahead and separated them by month. You can't really see the first couple. And then I do have the stack of books that I'm currently reading back here. And what's really cool for me personally is that last year I did this video around this time. So it's really cool to see how far I've come in my reading journey because I only really became a reader last year. I wasn't really into it growing up. Let's go ahead and dive right in starting with January. The first book I read this year was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I think this book is extremely underrated as I never hear anyone talk about it. I rated it four stars and it was perfect because it was set during New Year's. I don't know, what about these? I'm just gonna toss them I guess. Next we have The Maid by Nita Prose. I rated this two stars and it was definitely more of a cozy mystery than a normal mystery. Next we have Tom Felton's Beyond the Wand. I really enjoyed this book. I listened to the audiobook but I love the hardcover because it does have photos of what he was referring to. If you like Harry Potter I recommend. I rated this four stars. Next I listened to Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing by Matthew Perry. I listened to this book and it hurt my heart to hear but I do love Matthew Perry so much. She is my favorite character in Friends. I rated it four stars. Next we have Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. I rated it three stars. I was conflicted with the message. Next I listened to Have I Told You This Already by Lauren Graham. Huge Gilmore Girls fan over here. She is my favorite. I really love this book. I rated it four stars. Next we have The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. I love this book. If you are a Disney fan and you like romance, I highly recommend this book. I know that it isn't for everyone, but I really enjoyed it and the chapters are super short. I rated this five stars. Someone left a review on that book calling it Walt Disney Grandson Fan Fiction and I think that they are 100% accurate. Just saying. Next we have Carval by Stephanie Garber. I wanted so badly to love this book but I did rate it three stars. I'm still not sure if I'm going to give the series a chance but I do kind of love the vibe. Next we have Live No Lies by John Mike Comer. I really like this author. This is Christian nonfiction. I really love his writing and I really liked this book. I rated it four stars but I did disagree with something, so. And that was all for January, now on to February. First, I read Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. It is the second book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. I rated it five stars, and on Goodreads, all I wrote was, yep. What can I say? I loved it. Next, I have If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I rated this three stars. It was a book club pick. It's definitely got that dark academia vibe. I did enjoy it, and I feel like a three is harsh. I just feel like it wasn't entirely my vibe. Next, we have Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casamato. I rated this four stars. I really did enjoy this. It reminds me a lot of the show Good Girls. Eventually, I will be picking up the second one. Next, we have the perfect Valentine's Day read, which was so good to read in February, which is The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. This is YA. It is so freaking adorable. I rated it 4.5 stars. It's a super, super cute read. And it's like Groundhog Day, but for Valentine's Day. It was really cute. And it reminded me of the show Never Have I Ever and the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It was so freaking cute. And speaking of Valentine's Day, I actually got a Kindle for Valentine's Day from my wonderful boyfriend. And that is where I read The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. This was my first Geneva Rose book. I rated it 3.75 stars. I did really enjoy it, but I have seen reviews saying that it's bad, but I really thought it was actually pretty good. And genuinely, Geneva Rose is such a funny human. Like, if you check out her Instagram and her and her husband, they are so funny. Next, we have Garden City by John Mark Comer. Once again, a Christian nonfiction. I just really like his writing. He talks more to the reader as a friend rather than in a preachy way, and it's a very, very easy read. So I will be including some DNFs in here just because Goodreads does mark them as read. So starting with my first DNF of 2023, we have The Club by Ellery Lloyd. I literally could not get through this. It was dragging on so freaking much. I DNF'd it at 25%, but the text was relatively small 
and I just was making no progress through it and I was literally ripping my hair out. It was putting me in such a reading slump. And I've also read reviews saying that it was not worth going through it. Next we have The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walther. I loved this book. I rated it five stars. This is also YA, but it's such a cute, summery, cozy read. Like, can I please be adopted into this freaking family? Like, it was so cute. Highly recommend. Next, I listened to Pretty Fun by Kate Hudson. It was a book all about pretty much like hosting and like having your friends over and how to host tips and tricks. I really just listened to it blindly, but I really enjoyed it and it inspired me to eventually when we do get a house to host a lot more than we do because we live in a tiny apartment right now. Oh, and I rated it four stars. It was really cute. Next, I read Every Last Secret on my Kindle. I rated this a 3.75 stars, and all I wrote on the review was Alexa. Play Karma by Taylor Swift. I guess that's the, the vibe. Going into March, we are starting off with this gigantic, this thing is huge. Like, compared to a normal book, this thing was massive. Oh yeah. That's what I read next. But I found this thrift shopping. And so this is a uh, Ladies Night by Mary Kay Andrews. What's funny is that I rated this at 2.5 stars, but I genuinely could not stop thinking about it. So I feel like I need to up the rating. <laughs> I kept reading it to make sure that the really crappy villain got justice. That's literally what kept me holding on. Like I was listening to it for the majority of it, but it's kind of turned me away from checking out her other books, but I also love the vibe. And it was set in Florida, which is where I'm from. So that's pretty cool. So I'm not sure yet. I feel like we should up that to a three or a 3.5. And it's about like a blogger. And I feel like, cause I work in the influencer world, it's kind of relevant. I don't know. Next we have the infamous Housemaid by Frida McFadden. Everyone obsessed over this book. I really enjoyed this. I did rate it five stars. I haven't read the second one yet and I haven't thought about it much since I've read it. So I do feel like I should bump down the rating, but for the sake of this video, five star read. Next we have Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. This was also a five star read. It is so freaking cute. It's more YA. I was just absolutely in love with all of the movie references and this was just such a cutie and such an easy read. Like oh, if you're looking for something lighthearted, fast paced, this is it. So good. Next we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I haven't read the rest of them yet but I rated this a four star. I, looking back, I feel like I would rate it more of like a 3.75 just because I feel like I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to and the main character bothered me at some points due to like the miscommunication trope. It's still a relatively good book and I will eventually probably check out the rest of the series. I still haven't decided to be honest. Next I read on my Kindle was The Best of Friends by Lucinda Berry. So according to Goodreads, I rated this a two star and like genuinely, I remember it's just so bleh. I wrote in my review that it was boringly predictable, if that gives you any idea. I felt like it had potential, but it just felt like such a blah book and kind of like a waste of my time. So I don't recommend and I feel like I might even like bump down the rating. Next we have The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Now this recently became a show. I have not watched it. Honestly, because I rated it a 3.5, I kind of feel like it was a little bit overhyped. Maybe it's just not my type of vibe. It wasn't my favorite. Next we have The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. I think this one was released earlier this year and I was genuinely just obsessed with the freaking cover. This is, like this is gorgeous. So I did really like this book. I rated it four stars and I remember really liking the setting and I really liked the friendship, but I have recently read a book kind of similar. Yes and no. Honestly, I have not thought about this book once since I've read it. So I do feel like my four star rating would absolutely go down to a 3.5 or even a three because like genuinely looking at this, I have no emotion toward it, but I do love the cover. The cover is gorgeous. Next, I listened to Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, if you watched probably any of my book videos last year, which wasn't many, but if you watched any of them, Taylor Jenkins Reid was my favorite author. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was the book that got me into fiction reading inside of Harry Potter. Ever since I read Carrie Soto is Back and I wasn't really the biggest fan, I feel like I've been a little bit turned off, even though I love Daisy Jones and Malibu Rising. But this story was great. I listened to it actually, and it was such a quick read. It was like less than an hour. 
super fast. It pulled you right in and then it pulled you right out. It was so fascinating. The next book is One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. I think I read this on my Kindle, but I know for a fact that I listened to it. I just could not get into it. So I did actually DNF it and I think I rated it two stars. Oh no, I didn't rate it. I didn't rate it. Next, I read The God Who Stays by Matthew West. Now, I've grown up listening to him. This is Christian nonfiction. I rated this four stars. It talks a lot about trusting God, especially during the time of COVID and the pandemic. It was pretty good to read. And what's funny is I found it thrifting, but apparently he had actually sent it to someone and left a card. And the card is in the book, so that's kind of cool. I accidentally have his signature on there. <laughs> and I rated that four stars. I don't know if I mentioned that. Next we have Nora Goes Off Script by Annabelle Monaghan. This book was cute. I rated it 4.5 stars but I think I would bump down my rating considering that I haven't thought about it since. But it was cute and it was a relatively short read. And the last book for March we have is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is the same author who wrote The Villa which is funny because I bought them at the same time not realizing that they were by the same author. I literally just bought them based off of the concept. I was craving summer in March, okay? This book was a roller coaster and it was a thriller and it was literally so all over the place. I can't tell if I liked it or not. I rated it four stars and I think that I'll keep it at that. I think it was better than the villa though, if we're being honest. Now that we're hopping into April, let me tell you about the craziest book that I read this year. So the first book that I read was The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. She writes a lot of other popular mystery thriller books. I listened to this book just because it was available from, from my library on my way to Disney and on my way back to Disney. And I almost turned it off after two chapters just because I wasn't really getting into it. Go into this blind. If you are into thrillers, definitely check the trigger warnings if you are easily triggered. This was wild and not at all what I was expecting and, and now knowing the plot it's not something that I would usually read but I did find it super super interesting and I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I can tell you right now my drive from Disney and back which is two hours by the way back there and back. Literally I was so entertained. Like this book is still one of the craziest mystery thriller books I've ever read, but it's got a lot to it. So like I said, if you're easily triggered, definitely look it up. I went into it blind, so I don't really want to say what, what it's mainly about because I think going into it blind was such a benefit for me, but this book was crazy crazy like i rated it five stars but i had to keep pushing through it like it was just not like anything that i've read before and it just genuinely takes you down so many sketchy paths i don't know if you're into mystery thrillers and you're not triggered by much maybe try reading it it was wild at least to me so and it was not what i was expecting like looking at the cover looking at the title not in the slightest what i would have expected next we have another five star read which i feel like we haven't had too many of this year which is A Snowfall of Silver by Laura Wood. I love Laura Wood's writing. I read A Sky Painted Gold last year and I was obsessed with it. Like such a freaking vibe. And this was one of the only books that I've tapped this year. Obsessed, super cozy, super comforting, five stars. Next we have Crazy Love by Frances Chan. I'm kind of nervous to describe this book because I don't want to say the wrong thing. If you don't want to be convicted about your faith, don't read this yet. Like if you are someone who maybe is going through a spiritual warfare right now in your relationship with God and you get kind of triggered easily, don't read this yet. I think that if I read this book last year when I was really going through a lot of spiritual warfare, I would have had insane anxiety after reading this. I do feel like my relationship with God has developed a lot and I feel a lot more stable. So reading this was very, very beneficial for me. And I do think that this is a great book. If, if you know, you're religious, you're Christian and you want to work on your relationship with God, but I will say it is a lot of conviction. And if you're not ready for that, maybe don't pick it up yet. Pick it up when the time is right. This wasn't an easy read, but I'm very, very grateful that I read it. I rated it four stars, but I would definitely go back through it and like take notes. Next, we have another DNF. <laughs> This is the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I DNF'd this 68 pages through. I just could not get into it. I wish that I could, but I just couldn't. Apparently, it's like more of a cozy mystery, I think. A lot of people love this book, so... 
Maybe don't listen to me on this one. Then we have Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I rated this three stars. It was cute, but the timeline was all over the place. And the guy is just so written by a woman. Then we have In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. I found this thrift shopping. I rated this three stars. It kept me engaged, but I didn't really love it to be honest. Then I read Never Lie on my Kindle by Freedom McFadden. I think the majority of her books are on Kindle Unlimited. I rated this 3.75 stars. The plot twist did get me, but it took me forever to get through, which for a thriller is not a good sign, at least in my opinion. Then we have another DNF. <laughs> The Invitation by Lucy Bully. I wanted so badly to love this and I DNF'd it at 30%. I just could not get into it. It sounded very much up my alley. Like I love all of the retro vintage pink vibes, but could not get into it. And the last one for April is Once Upon a Broken Heart. I feel like for this one, I should bump up my rating. I got the, the really pretty pink shiny one. This is so gorgeous. I don't think I'm much of a fantasy reader. I rated this 3.75 stars. It's a really good story, but I do feel like it is a bit overhyped. I will probably check out the next book eventually. No, I think I gave it a 3.75. Gorgeous book though. Now into May, the first book that I listened to was Peak Brain Plasticity, and you're probably thinking this is coming out of left field. The author actually reached out to me and asked me to read the book and review it. It's not something that I would normally pick up, but I'm glad that I did. I rated it four stars, and it talked a lot about about anxiety and how the brain works and it was pretty fascinating. Next I read The Playlist by Morgan Elizabeth. Two stars, a lot of Taylor Swift but not in a good way. It was a book club pick. If you want to see my full thoughts on it, go to Goodreads. Next I read Sunkiss by Casey West. This was a super random Barnes buy. I rated it 3.5 stars. I feel like I would rate it 3. I literally felt no chemistry in between the two main characters but the cover is super cute and it does give you all of the summer vibes. And then we have another DNF of a super popular book and I always feel like this is a you either love a book or you hate it. I ended up DNFing it at 27% and that is Magnolia Parks. I wanted so badly to see what the hype was about but I could not get into it and I was so freaking excited to start it. I literally kept checking Amazon to see when it would arrive and I just could not get into it. So I DNF'd it. Super toxic. Maybe eventually I'll get back into it, but I'm not really a fan. And it's some people's favorite series, but it is so insanely toxic that I'm just like, I love seeing all my books. They're all like together on the floor. <laughs> Next we have The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. I bought this in the Keys, which will actually be a vlog coming soon eventually. I rated this 3.75. It got me out of a reading slump, but it wasn't anything crazy. Then we have Flow by Kate Marchant. I love this freaking cover and it was so cute and cozy. Definitely a perfect summer read. It's set in Florida and it reminds me so much of that 90s show, which is the That 70s Show reboot. Reminds me so much of it. Next we have The Roughest Draft by two different authors. They're actually married in real life, which is so freaking cool. Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. Also set dominantly in the keys, which is really cool. But it reminded me so much of Emily Henry's Book Lovers and Betrayed so much, but very, very cute, 4.5 stars did really enjoy this. Next, I read Happy Place by Emily Henry. Oh, uh, so freaking good. I rated this 4.5 stars. I did end up bumping my five star rating down just because I didn't think about it much afterwards, but I feel like I've thought about it since and I feel like 4.5 or five is pretty fair, but I tabbed the crap out of it. I have a whole reading vlog on this. It was a book club read. I loved this book so much. Highly recommend, super, super cozy. If you want to check out the reading vlog, I will link it down below. Next, I listened to Before We Were Innocent by Ella Berman. I wanted so bad to buy this book, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. I rated it 3.75 stars. I remember listening to it and thinking it's an interesting concept, but it was kind of a waste of my time. And it wasn't like the type of mystery thriller writing or plot that I liked where it's like, build up, build up, build up, plot twist, resolve, and then end. It was just kind of like there the whole time. I don't know. It wasn't anything crazy. I'm glad I didn't buy it. Then I listened to One Italian Summer, which was narrated by Lauren Graham, which like I said earlier, I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan and she is Lorelai Gilmore. And I do think that it would make a really interesting movie or series at some point. I rated it 3.75 stars. And the last book that I officially read was... 
Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I do have Meet Me at the Lake, her newest release, on my little TBR shelf, so I will be reading that soon. I rated this 3.75 stars. The whole conflict thing is just really hard for me to digest. I don't really think that I could personally deal with it. Yes, it does remind me a lot of Love in Other Words, which is what most people say, but honestly, I think I liked this one better. Which I feel like is a super unpopular opinion. Yeah, definitely gave you all the summer vibes and it was cute, but yeah, the conflict is kind of what got me and what kind of got me to bump down my rating. So there are all of the books that I have read in 2023. And if you want to know the books that I'm currently reading, uh, I can dive through my little stack. I have four going right now. The first one being Final Offer. So this one I'm reading really, really slowly because obviously it is a freaking brick. As you heard earlier, I've really enjoyed the other books in the series, but I'm not really loving this one so far, so I'm hoping that it picks up. I am 191 pages, but it's like 500, almost 600 pages, so we're getting through it very slowly but surely. Luckily, it's relatively fast-paced. And then I'm also reading two thriller mysteries. Why I decided to start two at once, I don't know. I was just like in the mood to start them and then I wasn't in the mood to read the other one. So <laughs> we have The Island by Natasha Preston, which has really not so great reviews. So kind of just reading it out of curiosity now. And uh, One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus but I'm struggling to get into it. And then lastly, we have Find Your People by Jenny Allen, which is a, I believe, a Christian nonfiction. It's about making friends as an adult. So there you have it. Those are the books that I'm currently reading and all of the books that I read in 2023 so far. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have read any of these. If you agree, if you disagree, what your thoughts are, feel free to follow my Goodreads. I will leave it down below. And to follow me on Instagram, sometimes I post down there about my books. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Other than than that have a magical day or evening or whatever you're watching this and you will see me very soon <laughs> bye guys